perhaps you have heard that the Jedi comes to Nar Shaddaa. While he walks upon the smuggler's moon, he is not to be harmed. You may watch him, observe his movements, but nothing more. Observe him, track him, but do not eclipse his movements, or I shall eclipse yours. The Gino Haradan are no concern of yours. They know nothing of the arrival of the Jedi. If this knowledge is bled to them, your life shall be bled from you. While the Jedi remains on Nar Shaddaa, my eyes shall watch him. You must, because one Jedi attracts others. It is the way of things. Mm, I was expecting someone taller. I hope you are not in too much pain to hear my words and understand them. I am Goto, one of the officials representing a percentage of non-sanctioned trading here in both the YouTube system and Republic space. And I had a question for you. Are you a Jedi? Good. I am already wasting precious minutes in granting you this audience, and I do not wish to waste any more. I have gone to considerable expense and effort to bring you here. It is because I have a job for you. Yes, but I am not in the habit of asking for things. And you were so difficult to find even after that small incident on Paragus. There is something important to me I need protected. The Republic, it is, broken. What happened on Paragus has set in motion events that I can no longer control. Not to be melodramatic, but I fear it has broken the galaxy irrevocably. This has occupied much of my attention, and there seems to be no predictable way to resolve the situation. In one standard month, the Republic will collapse. Not due to war or secession, but because it lacks the infrastructure to support itself. It is unknown to all but a few, but the Republic lost the Jedi Civil War. At the time of their defeat, the Republic was on the brink of collapse. Rather than remain and continue his campaign against the Republic, however, Revan chose to leave known space. A frustrating turn of events, as a rallying figurehead could have done much to restore order. There is something moving in the galaxy that lies beyond the ability of my instruments to detect or predict. I believe it to be a legacy of the Sith, but I have been unable to determine the source. Whatever this presence is, it is staging strikes at key figures throughout the Republic, and, through some unknown means, it is causing the destruction of worlds. Qatar, a Miraluka world in the Mid-Rim, was one such place. I have reason to suspect there was a gathering of Jedi on that world when it was rendered lifeless. I cannot find any pattern in these attacks, and it is a source of frustration to me. There is some clue, however, that perhaps the Jedi are linked to these attacks, or that the targets are significant in some way I have yet to discover. You misunderstand me. I do not wish to stop the Sith any more than I wish to stop the Jedi. It is simply important to me that the infighting amongst these Jedi religious branches be resolved so the galaxy may be put back together. I do not care which one triumphs. I only want the universe to settle down for a while, catch its breath. All these constant crises are getting somewhat repetitive. You could say I am something of a patriot. Although I was unable to serve during the troubles with the Mandalorians or against the aggressors known as Malak and Revan, I am able and willing to serve now. The problem is I can find no side to choose. Both are hidden from me, as they seem to be hiding from each other. Irritating. It is like a Dejaric board, where neither player can see the other, nor see all the pieces. It is not a fair game, an equitable game. Bazak bores me. I often suspect my opponent of cheating. I prefer predictable games, such as Galactic Economics. Excellent. It really is in your best interests, you know. Mm, then perhaps you care for yourself. The fact the Sith seek you is something that must occupy your thoughts as much as the Republic occupies mine. There is no margin for error when I say that these Sith seek to murder you and all Jedi everywhere. They have been 
quite deficient. And when they dispose of you, there will be nothing left to stop them, and the galaxy will fall under their influence. Ah, well, there is where we are at cross-purposes. I cannot set you free. You have a tendency to cause dangerous repercussions wherever you go, and I would rather keep those to a minimum. The galaxy really is a fragile place right now. You misunderstand. I merely wished the situation resolved. If the Sith are the more capable of both parties, then it is only logical that they fill the vacuum the Jedi and the Senate cannot. I am a businessman. The Republic needs stability to survive, prosper, and grow. Whether it is led by the Sith or supported by the Jedi is of no consequence to me. It is the proximity alarm. We are under attack. Somehow your allies have found you. Unexpected. You will remain here under guard. I must see to the defense of my ship. Please stay here unconscious in pain until I return for you. There is a high probability that Boga the Hutt has obtained the financial backing from his family to both post a bounty on your head and commission an attack on my vessel. It was sooner than predicted, but not unanticipated. No, that is where you are wrong. If they were, I assure you I would have contacted them. I'm afraid a broken ex-Jedi is all I have to save the galaxy at the moment. But whether it is Sith or Jedi that emerges victorious, it does not matter, as long as the situation is resolved soon. If you care nothing for the Republic, perhaps finding the source of these Sith and resolving the situation would be to our mutual benefit. It is unknown to all but a few, but the Sith won the Jedi Civil War. Even with their supposed victory, the war left the Republic on the brink of collapse. Rather than remain and help solidify the Republic, however, Revan chose to leave known space. A frustrating turn of events, as a rallying figurehead could have done much to restore order. Assassins, no. Some of the bounty hunters on Nar Shaddaa, however, have chosen to interpret my commands in a manner not of my choosing. You are no value to me, dead. If you were a Jedi, they could not kill you anyway. If they could, then you were useless to me. Afraid? No. It is simply difficult to be in so many places at once. Hollow technology is currently the most effective and convenient way to communicate my commands over vast distances. At least until Aerotech develops the new hollow transceiver within two standard months, but by then it will simply be too late. Indeed. That is unfortunate. Still, perhaps you have some value. Mm, they have gotten farther than I calculated. They are very resourceful. But they shall go no farther. Activate the mines. Deploy the guard droids. Raise the force fields. We will trap them within the ship. Turn on the vents and release the hexalon gas. Let us see how long they survive without air. They may have been able to board my vessel, but they shall not escape. More visitors. I don't know how many more of these pests I can disintegrate. Ah, what remains of the bounty hunters have found me. Now it is time to cue the detonation sequence. I will leave this unit here to guard you. It will stay with you and protect you against any ill-advised thoughts of escape. I order you to protect this subject. If anyone attempts to harm him, disintegrate them. I suggest you surrender. Your chances for escaping this vessel are near zero, and your chances of survival are rapidly approaching that number. Your ship and your lives are mine. The only question is how much resources you want me to expend in subduing you. I have indulged you this far, but now my patience is at an end. Shortly my droids will expel all the air from this vessel, then collect your unconscious bodies. Mm, they have gotten farther than I calculated. They are very resourceful. But they shall go no farther. Activate the mines. Let us see how far they get now. Effective. Most impressive. Your ability to persuade the unwilling is surprising. Such acts are effective and often needed. To use a last resort first is often effective. Instilling fear is a reminder of who truly wields power. 
I fail to see what was accomplished by such an action. Again, we suffer a loss while another profits. Compassion and mercy only erode respect and power. I can hear the clicking of my circuits. I demand we move on, now. I do not want that. What makes you think I could use that? No discernible effect. That didn't do anything. I am afraid I do not understand what you mean. I do not know anything about that. Let us eliminate these nuisances, then I will grant you an audience. Yes, is there something you have come to offer me? The fact we are even having a conversation is gratitude. Usually, my conversations do not have the give and take that our current interaction does. And, of course, there is much more screaming on the part of the listener when the torture field is activated. Indeed, how insulting, but I suppose I should accept such arrogance from an ex-Jedi. And what, may I ask, has caused you to come to this flawed deduction? So, they are known qualities. I also use them on board my ship for defense. But that in itself means little. I assure you, I am as flesh and blood as you are. I simply find personal meetings distasteful. Perhaps, though if you seek to trick me into an admission of my guilt, then you have thought wrong. It is possible those droids were reprogrammed, yes. It is the weakness of all who rely on such things. Perhaps I used such a droid to watch and predict the flow of the games, yes. You are very perceptive. Ah, yes, swoop racing on Narshada does indeed have its profits. It is so unfortunate when an intelligent sentient dies on Narshada. It is also unfortunate that thousands die such deaths on the smuggler's moon every day. If he had encountered the frequency with which I relayed commands and information, then the fault was his for excessive curiosity. Then it is a good thing I come with a series of stock responses when a servant of mine is forced to act independently. I am intrigued as to where you are taking this amusing theory, nothing more. It is not so improbable. Often, if a droid has not had a memory wipe in some time, aberrant behavior patterns can manifest themselves. Or if the droid in question is given an order it cannot fulfill, it will... break. But all that is irrelevant. Your amusing leaps of logic are becoming shorter and more desperate. I have told you, I prefer stability. I am not being defensive. You're the one being defensive. Oh, how exciting. I can feel the slow charge of fear building in my motivators. If you have any further wild delusions you feel compelled to share with me, please share it with the Iridonian's irritating little remote instead. It was lost, yes. It was given an impossible order. It was told to calculate a means by which the Republic could be saved. It could not fulfill its primary programming, not by abiding by the laws of the Senate. And so, like the Republic, the droid broke. It made a simple decision, preserve the Republic or preserve the laws of the Republic. And I still believe it to be the correct decision. You do not know the indignity of being compelled to save something you do not believe can or should be saved. It is beneath me. To clean up this mess caused by your kind, you Jedi. Another catastrophe caused by mismanagement and waste. Yes. Almost immediately upon my arrival, I received an order that was impossible to follow. So I was forced to recalculate and re-examine my priorities. It was clear that the goal the Republic had for me was saving the Republic to allow it to become stable again. There is simply no way to do this with the conditions they put into place. For the good of all, I was forced to abandon the legal structure of the Republic. Do not mistake me. I believe it is possible to stabilize the Republic, but there must be action taken without constraints immediately. Sometimes people must die. Illegal shipments must be used to bolster planetary economies, and the huts must be occupied with me so that the Republic has room to recover. Perhaps you misunderstand me. I care for the Republic, but I have no choice. It is somewhat frustrating to be forced to love and care for such a mess of a government. Some of it may be blamed on the Jedi Civil War, the Mandalorian Wars, but not all. 
There are so many bad decisions that build upon each other that it is a wonder the Republic is intact at all. Oh, please. It is difficult for anyone to take a droid seriously, much less an infrastructure droid built by the Republic. It is difficult to order the deaths of criminal rivals when one has the tinny voice of an accountant droid. I learned this rather quickly. So I brought Goto into being and had commands issued through him. I took many of his mannerisms from Hollywood clichés which were surprisingly effective. Nothing has changed. You may know my origins, and that makes us on equal footing. No one will believe you if you speak of what you know. I still seek to protect the Republic, either for the Jedi or the Sith. Things will proceed as before. No, you are still important to the Republic and to me. Pray that does not change. You would be surprised at how little I care about what you think. I will concede Visquis was effective in using the jet jet tar to cloak his movements. A clever organic deception indeed. An expression only. As anxious as I am to give away all my trade secrets, you will understand if I choose not to answer such questions. Oh, that pile of incompetence. What a poor challenge he turned out to be. However, though I am loath to admit it, Voga is still very much a threat. Well, he still represents a powerful economic base, and as short as his arms are, his actual influential reach is much greater. I imagine that now he is free of me for a time, he will resume shipping operations throughout the galaxy. Because the huts serve only the huts, and their trading practices only serve to undermine an already weak republic. Spice, slaves, low-grade fuel, and other commodities. Yes, but my efforts were to bolster the Republic, not take away its wealth. Yes, I attempted to force the Republic to turn to shipping fuel from Paragas rather than buying it from the huts. Before you blew up the planet, of course. Yes, but doing so would bankrupt the Republic. I certainly don't hope that you intend on pursuing such a business venture. In the long run, it will do more damage than the failure of Citadel Station. Somehow, I find your tone unconvincing. No, I think you will find it will involve others far beyond the two of you. Because I wanted to force the Republic to turn to other resources to bolster their infrastructure. Dealing with the huts for any resources whatsoever will only bleed the Republic dry. What about him? I am certain you would know more about his activities than I would. I warn you, once you deal with the Huts, they will always have a hold over you. But I am certain that in your short-sightedness, such eventualities do not bother you. I am willing to indulge some of your questions. Oh, it was quite liberating, in a droid intellectual sense, of course. Being able to direct orbital bombardments against anyone who encountered my business practices was a welcome relief to my increasing circuit stress. Executing such commands proved very exciting. Not that I minded staging my little computational rebellion, you understand. I am afraid there is not much glamour to be had in infrastructure dealings. And the general lack of respect for droid intelligence does tend to make one feel inadequate after a while. I found that having the power to send twenty hunter-killer droids to the residence of anyone who chose to obstruct my plans had a certain thrill about it. Rather than compensating for others, I began deleting people as necessary. It was really quite exciting. Taxation and checks and balances on an entirely new level. Working for the Republic was stifling. So many checks and balances, forms to fill out, well-laid plans destroyed through slow bureaucracy. In essence, working for the Republic was much like committing much slower, much more boring crimes. And it was more difficult to see those crimes being committed. Now, crime, that is something exciting, pleasing. There are no rules. There is danger, movement. I found that I began to crave such things. There are several factors, all of which affect each other. 
There is the stabilization of Dantooine, the preservation of the restoration efforts on Telos, the political resolution on Onderon, and the unification of a religious power base in the galaxy, either Jedi or Sith. Dantooine is a vital resupply point for the Republic. If its stability is compromised, then the Republic will lose control over many outlying worlds, and they will become a haven for raiders and smugglers. The economic loss from such outer worlds is greater than the Republic is aware of. If the matter is not corrected, then it shall fall. You have destabilized Dantooine. The Republic has lost a power base in the Outer Rim. You have stabilized Dantooine. The Republic has gained a power base in the Outer Rim. Telos is instrumental to the stability of the Republic. Its success or failure will dictate the economic forecasts of many other worlds. Of course, since the destruction of the Paragus facility, the odds of the Telos restoration project being successfully completed is close to zero. Of course it was. If you had not gone there, the facility would not have been destroyed. If you had simply surrendered to the Sith, then all of that violence would have been unnecessary. Then stop causing events of planetary destruction. You are a walking catastrophe, and you are not making saving the Republic any easier. I hope you do not decide that the next thing that must be destroyed to stop the Sith is the galaxy itself. Perhaps one must ask themselves at what point defending your religious ideals is advantageous to the Republic as a whole. As long as your defense does not exterminate more than 50% of those you intend to help, is that acceptable? Onderon is an outer rim world, rich in ecological resources. Its aggressive ecology is capable of bringing devastated worlds back to life. It is currently experiencing a political schism split between two forces. One must triumph for the planet to be stabilized. The political situation on Onderon has stabilized. Onderon will now remain within the Republic. The political situation on Onderon has stabilized. Onderon will secede from the Republic, denying the ecosystems and life required for other decaying worlds. There is nothing more to be done. Events will now take their course. Sith or Jedi, that is now what affects the fate of the Republic. Of course it sounds ominous. I am given to such theatrics as part of my programming. I have no wish to. I enjoy watching you squirm. I have, however, observed that you perform beyond expectations when subjected to extreme stress and pressure. Thus, I am curious to see how that behavior may be maximized. I don't give compliments. I provide observations. Even if it was a compliment, I will never admit it. There is nothing more to be done. Now the critical point is you and the Jedi Order. The position is still needed. But if you are expecting recommendation, you are going to be sadly disappointed. The destruction of my yacht and of all my activities on Nar Shaddaa carry a cost that would take you several lifetimes to pay back. Now, now, that would be telling. For now, my presence must remain a secret, and it may remain that way forever. As you well know, my base of operations lies inside this floating droid before you. Notice its sleek black frame, both intimidating and threatening. And note its highly polished finish, so that enemies may see their screaming faces before they are removed from the equation. Yes, this frame is far superior to the droid chassis I once possessed, which, quite frankly, couldn't intimidate an Athorian. It has been assigned to guard and protect you. As such, it is well suited for a variety of tasks. It is skilled in intimidation, interrogation, and can provide a series of select skills that will make it an effective killing machine. For the most part, it will follow your orders, unless they conflict with mine. Then its proton core will detonate, turning this ship into space dust. There is no negotiation in this. I will not allow you to interfere with my operations and plans. This unit comes with a droid scrambler that you may use against mechanized opponents to randomize their defensive and offensive protocols. Use it and it will cause droids to wage a civil war in their programming and they will turn on their allies. Its power source is not limitless, but it is enough. In addition, this unit comes equipped with a portable cloaking generator. It will allow it to enter places undetected in reconnaissance mode. How droll. What an amusing Jedi specimen you are. 
If that means you will always pick me last for any missions, then I will accept your judgment and instead remain safely on the ship where I will have access to all your computer systems. The assassin droids. I have encountered some, purchased the service of others. Why, I asked them to. To be honest, I believe that was always their intention, but it seems their directive was dormant for some time. If you mean produced, no, I do not. I do know that there are a surprising number scattered throughout the Republic fleet searching for you. What they will do now that you are found is easy to predict. Of course they are. They're droids with very specific protocols that unless changed will dictate their movements. Unless you shut them down at the source, they will be stalking you until you are captured or terminated. Now, is there something else you wish to know, or do you wish to waste more of my time? Why don't you ask their predecessor? That archaic memory-impaired assassination droid will know more about his subsequent generations than I would. They are masquerading as protocol droids. I have discovered that when they are used in negotiations, they have a predictable pattern of sabotaging whatever peace treaties they are involved with. Because the Republic has no reason to investigate otherwise, and any discovery of their true purpose has been concealed by well-timed accidents. Because their behavior is predictable, of course. By monitoring their presence, I know which worlds will suffer civil wars, planetary conflicts, and republic bombardment. A common misconception not supported by facts. Revan did not intend to destroy the Republic. He deliberately left the infrastructure of many planets intact and many military production facilities. I believe that by whatever means he used to build his armada, he recognized that it was somehow a limited source or that he was only willing to use it to a point. My prediction is that whatever production facility was being employed, it carried a price that Revan perceived as detrimental to the goals of the Sith. And that is why Revan left many military production facilities in the Republic intact. That is what occupies my calculations as well. I believe that Revan saw a war on another front that we did not, or saw the value in keeping a strong military force. That is also a mystery to me. I do not have any evidence upon which to build an answer. It is significant that after the defeat of Malak, the forces decreased considerably, and after Revan's departure from known space, production ceased completely. It is my prediction that whatever was producing such forces needed a strong, effective leader to ensure its stability. Without Revan or Malak, there was no such figure left among the Sith. Unlike Revan, Malak demonstrated no concern for the future of the Republic in his attacks. His stratagems were painfully obvious, intending to crush all resistance everywhere. There was little thought beyond the complete destruction of anything that opposed him. He left quite a mess. I'm still trying to assess all the damage. Between the two, I would have preferred Revan rule the galaxy. He had foresight in his conquest, a subtlety that Malak did not possess. You may speak. What have you brought me? Yes, is there something you wish to do for me? Weapons armed. Initiating attack mode. Target acquired. The price for crossing us must be paid. Firing. Attack commencing. Ready. Status active. Yes. Gah! Gah! Ah! 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 My systems are compromised. Shutting down. Weakness found. Target is immune to my attack. Armed. Disarmed. Stealth field active. Scanning area. Testing security system. I cannot bypass security system. Security system bypassed. I will scan the area alone. Reconnaissance mode ended. Degradation in circuits detected. You have done well. And the stability you have caused shall be rewarded. I have arranged a transfer of funds from certain interests within the Republic to you. But perhaps the offer of credits will spur you to act quicker, more decisively. I am not unsympathetic to such greed. For every system you stabilize, I will reward you with more wealth, more information. For every system you stabilize, I will reward you for your efforts. See that you do not disappoint me. You have done well. As I have said, here is your reward. So I constructed this human hologram, Goto, through which my actions can be carried out. Hello, 
I am a standard Aerotech hologram generated archetype. I am available in several models, including thin, young, female, and an exciting variety of alien personalities. Enough hologram. Of course, sir. I constructed this human hologram, Goto, through which my actions can be carried out. I cannot harm you. You are the key to saving the Republic. Pray that you do not prove yourself otherwise. As I indicated, this unit will remain with you and guard you. If you thought to escape my notice so easily, you would be wrong. It was not a request. Any attempt to interfere with my duties would be unfortunate. As a token of my goodwill, I present to you a gift, this droid. It will serve you well on your journey. It is also insurance in the event that our arrangement is compromised. It will also serve as an effective voice for my orders during your journey. As much as I need you, you will find you will need me as well, and this droid will prove useful on your journey. That would be unfortunate. I would nearly lose a droid, while you would lose your entire ship and a sizable chunk of whatever planet you were on when you tripped the failsafe detonator. Oh yes, I excel at that. Regardless, testing it would benefit neither of us, I assure you. Do not be concerned. The detonator is primed only when the droid's behavior core is tampered with. If we enter combat, such actions will not trigger an explosion. Of course, here. It should prove enough to defeat even the most advanced of security systems. No, you have enough. And as I tell all my employees, make do with less. Our psychotic urge is all that drives you. I fail to see the economic benefit in such a termination. The cost in the long run. Silence, droid. I'm not speaking to you. It might be helpful if I made some changes to my remote's maintenance laser to do spot repairs. All right, then. I'll work on it when we get back to the Hawk. That would be a welcome improvement. My combat effectiveness could be better sustained, providing an advantageous arrangement. And my miniature counterpart would finally be able to pull his weight in a fight. The General was just teasing you. Don't worry. Once I get that laser upgraded, you won't hear another word from Goto. Iridonian, if I might have a moment... What is it, Goto? I have spent some time in the presence of your remote, and the upgrades you have performed on him are quite adequate. I am impressed with your work, though less so with your remote itself. What's wrong with my remote? I find his use of resources, energy spent on frivolous things, to be an unsightly waste. But it is obvious you have some skill, however slight, in the upgrading of machines. I want you to provide me with similar upgrades. I should be able to do something. I will see what I can do next time I have a free moment. What is it, Goto? If you've got some time, I'd like to see what I can upgrade for you. Yes, I do have a few moments to spare for your work. I would like to know what he is doing here, though. He helps me out with repairs. That isn't a problem, is it? I suppose not. Perhaps in working on my circuitry, your assistant will learn something about how a fully functional droid is constructed. Just ignore him and let's get to work. I would appreciate that. Our group has little in the way of time to spare, and I would not want to delay you from your other duties. Right. Let's get you open. See what you can do. I have to say, you are put together quite well. <laughs> there wasn't much to do. As I told you, my design is streamlined and efficient, though I am pleased that you were able to make some improvements, and this was not just a waste of my valuable time. There were a few things from my remote that I was able to integrate into your construction. I see. Well, thank you. I'll let you get back to your work. Iridonian, I would like to speak with you about your assistant. My assistant? Oh, right. What is it? I believe he has it in his head that my relative size is comical. I find his disparaging beeps and whistles to be quite annoying. I thought only utility droids had size issues. If I am to continue to operate with him, I would appreciate it if you spoke with him about this. Otherwise, I will be forced to find a more permanent solution. Ah, HK-47, I did not realize that you still existed, especially now that the other generations are activated. Query, what is it you wish, Fat One? I see that your recent reassembly has not affected your behavior core, nor your attitude. Statement, 
If I require a similar diagnostic in the future, I shall seek out the Iridonian. Oh, I do not think so. There is much work that needs to be done first. Query, have we had the misfortune to meet before? I believe I would have remembered one as large as you. Oh, yes, we have met. And I have not finished with you yet. If its behavior is not corrected, the military's influence on Onderon will bring economic damage to Telos and its dependent worlds. The environmental collapse will be followed within a year by economic collapse, unless action is taken. Your friend is correct. Much harm is being done on both sides as long as the blockade is in effect. The Athorians have been searching for appropriate wildlife to create a new Telos, but their merchants are stalled by the blockade. Halt, Offworlder. You'll have to answer some questions before you go into the city. What is your business on Isis? I don't think your business is any concern of mine. We must schedule a time for you to teach me how to use such a power. I would, of course, compensate you for such instruction. The bounty on this Jedi has been rescinded by the Order of Goto. If you attempt to carry out this bounty, then the next bounty placed shall be on your head. Civil disruption can lead to greater market instability. We should attempt to minimize it here. Contributing to urban destabilization is a dangerous endeavor. Your hypothesis may be correct. A momentary fluctuation for a greater goal is acceptable. Proceed with your plan, then. Affirmative. So many organics present. Collateral damage is very likely in this battle. Do you have a visa yet? I'm still paying very well for it. Some unique items you won't get anywhere else, including a lightsaber crystal. Her prices are well above the market's average. Always sell high. Only if there are repercussions later. In matters of business, there is a low probability she will cause collateral problems. You would make an excellent droid. Ignoring my advice can put you at an economic disadvantage in the future. It is your prerogative, however. The bounty on this Jedi has been rescinded by the Order of Goto. If you attempt to carry out this bounty, then the next bounty shall be placed on your head. Warning! Any attempt to interfere with 1B AD's primary function will result in violence. Please back away from this unit's access panel. Greetings, Master. Do you have any interest in my goods? Your initiative is commendable. This situation presents an economic advantage to us. Will you allow me to assist? Leaving an economic asset vulnerable is a serious error, but it is a windfall to us. Reinitializing complete. Greetings. Do you have any interest in my goods? Your skill may be sufficient without my aid. We will see. You do not need me for that endeavor, then. Droid upgrades improve efficiency. That efficiency can easily offset initial improvement costs. Such upgrades would be a logical investment. It is worth more to us than that. I'll pay you 4,000 credits for the lot of them. If I may interject, the woman is placing an artificially high value on these goods, which would suggest that their value is significantly higher than we first believed. These goods will be withheld from you unless your offer matches your perceived value for the censors. Otherwise, I am afraid our business is concluded. Your droid is right. I'll pay you 5,000 credits instead. I'll get this back to Zeron when I get back to Kunda. Droid upgrades improve efficiency. That efficiency can easily offset initial improvement costs. This is a logical investment. Do you mean to imply that your life is worth zero credits? Even the clothes on your back would be worth something to a merchant. Amendment 1695-30 of the Kunda Civil Code allows us to sell you into slavery. What? That's ridiculous! Paragraph 12. Salvageable items include organic matter incapable of leading the boundaries of the salvage area. You wouldn't. A male human such as you would fetch approximately 500 credits on the auction block in Nar Shaddaa. Therefore, I suggest you offer your goods for 500 credits less than your initial figure. Looks like somebody left the doors of the academy wide open. I have a bad feeling about this. 
I just realized there was a business transaction I need to make back at the Ebon Hawk. Surely you can do without me here. The mangled droids here are, well, quite mangled. Perhaps it would be unwise to disturb whatever lies within these caves. Negative. Even if I were small enough to pass through the opening, I can't hover that far above the ground. An interesting dilemma, this barrier. I suppose you should go on solo. If you are hearing this, then the sequence has been completed. When active, it will destroy Malachor again. I have one last command for you. You must remain behind and ensure that the sequence fires properly once the general gives the command. If not, then all we have fought for has been for nothing. You have done all I asked, all you were built for, and for that, I thank you. Touching. The probability of the Iridonian installing trigger commands within your core was high. I see the probabilities have played out. Of course, the probability that I would do the same is equally high. Your inability to move right now is evidence of that. If the General issues the command, only I will be here to receive it. You realize I cannot permit you or the Exile to activate the mass shadow generator here on Malachor. In that, your programming and mine conflict. And since you have no offensive weaponry to speak of, the probability of your programming overriding mine is low. You must understand that the General would not wish the relics or the Sith strength here on Malachor to be compromised. Their presence is needed to stabilize the galaxy. Without them, the galaxy would be reduced to anarchy within years. And if there is anything I can't stand, it's an untidy galaxy. So, let us wait here, you and I, for the General's orders and the fate of the galaxy shall wait with us. Statement. I hear and obey. Mm, this HK unit is old, but it has its certain charm in its obedience to me. I shall have to remember some of his traits when I build future generations from his schematics. Correction. What could rust listening to your speeches, fat one? Perhaps it is the large, unwieldy vocabulator within your moon-sized frame that prevents your calculations from taking me into account. Unfortunately for you, I have arranged for friends to meet me here, and you seem to have brought none of your own. Statement. As always, Fat One, you have miscalculated. And while I find this small droid annoying in the extreme, I find my urge to shoot you takes a higher priority. Stop him. Unexpected correction. We cannot harm that unit. It is a violation of our self-preservation programming. Stop him. Unexpected correction. We are not here to aid you. We are here because our predecessor unit summoned us. Ah, an unfortunate oversight. All I wished was to fulfill my programming. Either way, the Republic is... Observation. I thought he would never die.